you here for the Game Master Workshop? I'll go check it out. Okay, sounds good. It's technically tabletop game design and video game I fall in the same category. Sort of. Yeah. Sort of. Um, from a physiological point of view, you're training the human mind to uh, go through resource analysis, temporary versus long term. Expression, verbal expression of your character's objectives, prioritization thereof, subdivision, and compromise with others on the basis of missions, maximizing side ventures in the process, you know, or return on investment, if you will. Great business point of view. Description of three dimensional spaces and improving your ability to visualize and analyze movement and logistical operations. And the three dimensional real. And in short, it ends up that this is a head training program. This is not a game. Also, not a game because you're a winner as opposed to a loser, which is one of the classic definitions of sports, games, and table. Well, I'd have to say that, and the emphasis on the MMO, which is the But we have found that mentally, most users reconstruct the environment into a way, especially subparsing the experience. In short, this morning we're operating at a different level here than let's go. Fairly cerebral stuff. The times I run this seminar on three continents. Out with like pages of notes because they're getting all this outstanding advice from other game masters who are critiquing their performance. Have to do. Fun time last night. Yes. Glad you made it. What do you do for a living? For a living, I'm a pharmacy Okay. But put it this way, um, if you'll pardon me, you seemed. Quiet, cute, and cerebral. <laughs> and I liked a lot of the stuff that was clicking behind your eyeballs, other than, okay, I'm the type that looks for that sort of thing. I'm going to be that to rank beauty queens and all that. You know. uh, no, I thought you were really just in brief. Don't mind me, I'm an old guy I'm taking for 20 years, etc. But I have no problem complimenting actuals and talent and skills and things when I see them. So. <laughs> But in a way that's not insulting, and that's a whole different mindset that we've evolved in modern day and things like that. For example, in my head, if you say Indian chief, I think of uh, Chef Chopper, who's CEO of a you know, tech firm from India. You know, uh, no, oh, Native Americans? No, well, let's see, I know Cree, I know Sioux, I know Cherokee, you know, it's like subcompartmental, that's different. The usual broad brush labels don't seem to work in a lot of things. It's not that I don't see color or race, that's stupid, it's part of your audio, but, but when that goes and back references a memory bubble, and there's too many different examples to broad brush categorize anybody, that's a whole different view of the world somehow, and we need experience with, for example, black families. I, mean, I grew up military black, which is totally different from the South Boston black, which is totally different from, you know, on the north. Uh, it takes experience in the world to break out of these natural tendencies to so compartmentalize and broad brush categorize people into unfair categories like gamers, <laughs> nerd weirdo freaks. Now this is no big deal. It's just a general guideline as to some of the very minimal things, bottom right corner, that we're looking for on each of the buildings. But uh, th this isn't about paperwork or about following forms or working through things. Uh, give it another couple of minutes to see if anybody else talks up. Essentially, the way this goes. this goes is I will give, you will choose a 
we get organized on a Sunday morning, and then after that, we will choose a genre um, or specific game system, whatever you like. You know, whatever you're the most comfortable. With. I'll give you a generic situation, like we're just starting out on the event. You know, and the town is like this, blah blah blah, or the same. Um, or it might be after the big battle, you've just finished wiping out, blah blah blah. You know, and then you will be ad libbing your game master thing. If there are any die rolls, just move your hand and say, okay, if you like, want to go that far, or just announce the die roll result, or whatever. Well, mentally facile enough, I think, to handle this. And to imitate being players. You know, as far as like, I'm going to move over here rather than sitting at the end of the table. Part of it. Keep on dipping. Wrong attitude. So does this sound okay? Okay. Um, what we're going to be focusing on, though, is the interactive experience at the table with us and skipping all the details of game. You'll see how it goes. It's a little hard to describe, hence the event descriptions are always and the number of sign-ups are always a little uh, You have an event, or would you like to observe here? Okay, here. great. We'll get Sean plugged in. Now Sean's voice is blown out. Um, yes. Do you GM at all? Yeah. Room game? Okay, you want to sit in and make sure of this? Excellent. Is someone actually here or no? You are. No, we'd be safe enough. Sounds good. Now, Sean, what I'd like you to do is observe what's going on and think about whether you'd like to run something like this. Convention. Um, Hawksman is either seriously considering his own something like this. He's got in on one of these and put his head off. He's, nobody's doing this stuff, right? Things worth doing looking in brief, we're looking at the tabletop experience rather than you can see how it goes here. You've got the full. So, really, um, the only other aspect is that I'm going to write up a few little roles. Just in passing, I run a little thing called the Ad Lib Dungeon where everybody writes down first. Sort of handle all of those disparate elements. And then we have a crazy four hour DD. Uh, I, uh, I told again, a lot of creative design. I don't know if this should be making any work. Half as a plot that ties in the Terminator, the Garden of Eden, the Genie from the early TV. I mean, all kinds of stuff. But uh, one of the tropes.
as I inferred earlier, uh, we've just had a major downtown city encounter with some big thing from a bank, real good, from the big bank, who is nowhere in sight. We don't expect this to be the final encounter because, you know, there's all the one of the early climaxes leading up to the final Dana Mall um, So it's after the battle. We have one. I don't know what the status is of everybody. That's in your hands at this point. Can you take whatever? All right. You may stand or sit as you feel. You just do it as you want. Once again, brief reminder, play your rolls if you have one, and imitate the eye rolls if it's appropriate. You don't need to know system. You don't need to know squat at this point. Uh, so I got three players? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Treat him as observing, so we got four of us. We got four players. All right. You guys beat the ant bots and all their little minions, but one of you was severely injured. I think you got severely injured. Uh, <coughs> so we need... He needs to be medical attention. Healer! Healer. Well, you are the healer. No problem. We now need an alternate healer. Um, so does anybody have any ideas for what you do to get the healer? Mm -hmm. Missing, like, the left half of I the think the rules say that he can still do some healing at that point. It's a, it's a skill check. It's a skill check, but he is kind of unconscious. Oh, wow. If, if you have a weak to do you have a secondary? Now remember, you do have some favors from the, uh, the, the police force, because you rescued them in that last mission, and so they can grant you a favor, but if you use that favor up, that's one of the doing that you said. Talk to some guys. One of them actually recognizes you from 
his contact? Yeah, you your contact will work back. Five. Five? Well, Charge that's a good one. one. So, um, I, I so still think you can do more and What'd you do for my work? Holding back. You are. You know, that, that section in the book, after combat and special damage and things, shit, what do we do? What do we do more stuff? Well, because you're, because you're the martyr class, you do get to take some wounds. But for you, um, while you're running in there, you find um, where he's looking like he's about to see the exact building he's going to be tunneling under that is You're doing mm -hmm. a mind roll to help out. Oh, okay. Yeah, because mine is just... Yeah, yours was average, but you have that synergy going on because okay. you use his contact right. network. All right, good. Um, and if you want to do some buffs, is there anything? Do you want to do some armor buffs, some healing buffs, some damage buffs? I'd say a mix of healing. 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 damage buffs. I mean, that is kind of my job. Okay, so I think... That's by now. If, remember, if you split your buffs up, they're a little bit lower for each person, so you can give a general group a buff, or you can try and focus on one person and try and jump back and forth. Um, he does pretty good with a damage buff, because he goes pretty fast, because you deal enough damage, but... You were worried that you weren't quite healing enough last time, so if you get that synergy going, but it's up to you. Too much. It's a give and, a give and take system. Uh, do you want to hold back this time? Let's hold back. This time. Okay, we're gonna hold back and kind of kind of plan ahead. Sweet. Um, you guys get all your prep work done. You gotta get your your stuff going. Are we ready for the big assault? Okay, we'll call it at this point. Okay. Now you see kind of how it goes. Okay. Uh, and I'll lead off to set the tone of the sort of feedback that I'm looking for in general. All right. Um, you are tilted. You have a good view of all the participants, all four. You made a good effort to make eye contact and to keep swinging around and checking with everybody. Sometimes, you know, when I was making rules and all, you know, obviously I'm the rules lawyer. Um, I'm doing all that, it's easy to get distracted and be focusing on that and to let others go. You weren't quite playing your role as much as I wanted you to, but okay. you had quiet. I had quiet, yeah. yeah. I you when he brought quiet me. enough that you might have noticed that he was being quiet, but you didn't. You you were hitting everybody so regularly, yeah, and then he I, was providing. I expected when he was playing, when he was, was hitting me, that was when I was. Okay. Okay. That was the only time I was really. And that, that was why I focused on you two balancing you two together. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, so good contact, good job of pulling everybody for, for this and that. Uh, when I get in, try the rules argument, they did it successfully counter with other rules and balance that. That's what I call a neutral result. You can actually get up with a positive result. We'll get to that. Uh, like I say, real good control and good knowledge of the super system. Uh, I was making up a system. So. Yeah, <laughs> but, but that, that feel, that right. super, that lighter gauge, you know, less granular, more epic, you know, general thing. Uh, and a good, you know, just a good general map, mental map of what supers do and this and that, you know, that sure. Okay, on the other side, uh, from the beginning I was lacking a sense of individual identity. Now this is an arbitrary, artificial situation, dropping in a one shot. But, when you're in this situation, or even for folks who are fairly new at a game, you may lose track of their identity. And if you can, if you, for example, said, okay, first off, who's who? And bang, bang. Uh, but that, once again, is more related to this abstract construct than a regular I actually game. made a mental note to do that, and then forgot to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then forgot to do that. So perhaps you scribble more notes scribble. if your head goes too fast. I have the same problem. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So absolutely, um, but a bare sense, right down to, and this gets one trickier, a sense of male-female identity. I tend to actually overtly avoid that, to avoid the stereotypes we tend to apply to male-female. Uh, the Western world, uh, male-dominant, you know, he-man thing versus the nice uh, go-along gal. And those rules have become so mixed, those roles in the modern world. Sometimes I get excellent effect by refusing to even bring up gender, okay, or race. Sometimes I'll just be in one context, you know, whether you want, you might want, I want your gender, I want your genetics, your race, your tendencies, whatever, and get a good sense of identity going from which we can then build characterization through interactions. Um, 
I warned you this was pretty terrible before I off the start. I didn't have a sense of the environment. I gave you a generic environment, and you didn't paint in any of the parts, you know, like, okay, and part of the ruined bank over here, and the apartment store's still okay, but there's some dummies laying in the street, and we could add some color to that. Um, when you're adding color, if you will, or the paint the environment, remember all the senses, not just the visual. This is one area where most game masters drop the ball. All factory elements, the smells, can be absolutely huge. These trigger memories in us, the cross associations, the whole thing. Feel free to take notes, by the way. Um, anything I'm saying, he's saying anything. Um, yeah, I've got Let's see. Yeah, things like that. And you'll find with just a few, I did a couple of illustrations of this in games I did yesterday. It was less than two minutes, and all of a sudden the whole world spilled in. You know? But it's not the world I painted, it's the clues I planted for people to paint their own background. So, on the one hand, you can get too detailed on the description and they don't have any creative input. On the other hand, when it's not important to the setting per se, that folks fill in what's out there blocks away, miles away, whatever. Uh, depend. Um, so a lack of personal identity and a lack of <coughs> sense of the environment was one thing. Uh, operationally though, like I say, you were making good contacts, the right things, getting things moving in the right direction, and by the time you closed, it was move on, forward, you know, another encounter, yeah, keep going, so good pushing on that. That's about, the, did you have any questions for me? No, like, like I said, I had, to, I had it in my head, ask everybody what right. they are doing, and then I just evaporated it. Um, and I do with the sensory notes, whenever they're put into a module or something I'm doing, I always make it a point to hit the sensory notes, but I do forget to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm good at myself. I'm good at, I'm good at visualizing, and I forget that I help other people visualize. Right. Now, what did you feel was your best point in what you did? Of the various techniques and this and that. Um, like I said, I, I figured pretty quick you were the quiet one and you were boisterous, so I was trying to get you two to kind of play off each other so that your energy is... Well, I put her in for dominant, though. She was well, the dominant. Yeah. Yeah. And I was sticking to the rules. Cool player, player, but time. you were the most active player. Yeah. So I was trying to help you pull it It was out. first time out, once again. You yeah. know, we're getting the hang of the artificial kind of yeah, and I was trying to, get, trying to get you two to play off each other, and I kind of made sure that you two synergize so that you can mm -hmm. see how well you work together. Okay. I wanted to make synergy a big part of the game, right. so that way team dynamics were important. What do you think was the worst feature of what you did? Um, Aside from the points that I brought right, I was the, the I kind of had not quite an idea of what I was going to do with the plot, mm -hmm. so it was very much a make it up as I went, mm -hmm. um, which is why there was enough went fine. details. I right, thought. but that that was that was why there was a lack of sensory details. So I think if I had thought through it a little bit, and even just take a moment to go, okay. Give me a minute to yeah. focus. That's very relevant. When I say, here's a situation, you can say, okay, give, give me a minute, minute to, to focus. And I think that's I fine. I would have done 30 that, seconds, whatever. it would have been a little bit better. But, yeah. Again, more relevant to the arbitrary setting than for an in game. Input. What's your name again? Eric. 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 Um, my input that, uh, from what I saw is that there was the team environment, which was like I said, basically mm -hmm. it was the construction of building an environment. Even though there was lacking areas, well, like you said, the, the attention to detail, uh, certain aspects would have been nice to actually cover, even though that would have been small, like, uh, like a rock or something that basically a, a pivotal point where you could go back and say, hey, I passed this zone, I saw something that basically caught my attention, and then I can move into the depth of what's in that zone. Yeah, I was a little fuzzy on exactly where I was in that rock thing, et cetera, but that's what's going to find. So I mean, it, well, I mean, it wasn't amazing, but overall, I think that the communication was great. Uh, there could have been more attention to detail. Uh, the focus was going to take the radar right on the boss. That was obviously the impact, and that it, it flowed pretty well for the most part. Um, and once again, introduce yourself for everybody. I'm Chris Parks. I'm up from or down from Denver, so it's kind of where I'm a new base. And I actually tend to do quite a bit of stuff with Sean. So, ideas, comments, pluses, minuses, anything you care about? Well, I thought you did a pretty good job of going around between everyone and, and trying to get everyone involved. Um, one thing I did notice is you focused, seemed to focus a lot on those of us that actually had the roll cards in front of us. You didn't seem to be focusing as much as on him. And he was doing quite almost better than I was. 
in a lot of ways. It killed him right off the bat. There was <laughs> that, too. <laughs> that didn't really help much. But uh, I think uh, even though he was dead, when he came back in, it seemed like he was left a little, a little behind. Um, so once you had, I guess the, the way to phrase that is, the one, once you had an idea of who people were, what people were looking like, you focused on the problems you saw initially rather than seeing if any other problems developed throughout the session. But you did keep going in a circle to hit all of us. So that was actually kind of both a good thing and a little bit of a, a negative too. But um, I liked the I liked the way you were able to bounce off of one person when someone was really into something, you were able to help support what they were looking for and, and doing, doing what they were looking for, and then also be able to drag someone else into that too. Right. I did like how you, like, uh, as an instructor, I try to include everybody. You were very flawless and I'm sure that at the very end, I kind of felt they were doing in the moment. Um, I'm still very new at gaming myself, so I don't really have a lot of information that this one has already been stated. But I did really like the. It, it felt like, you know, we were there a little bit. Like, yeah, we're, we're absolutely playing this game. We're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that part was good. We've had some dynamite uh, horror game scenarios in these events. That, uh, and those Do you want to read it aloud? Or? Okay. Um, and then, Sean, it was a, a bit two directional, not quite enough of what are you thinking doing. Um, not extreme, but a notable thing. And that was the thing that I noticed that I was doing. I was assigning roles and, and kind of dictating your actions to you. Um, I had a thing that had you been more familiar with the system, there might have been less of that. But I like to make sure that you were able to do something. Yeah, that was a thing I noticed, and, and that was a, it wasn't the worst, well, there weren't and I'm Cassidy, <laughs> I've been in the enemy for a very long time, <laughs> like, I am adding one more slip, but you hate railroads. In other words, when you get channeled one direction, that you will fight to open up your options and things like that. Oh, okay. Um, all right, input from you all on the experience that we just had. Things that you found valuable overall. Now we'll get into more depth as we have more people who have more things. Initial reactions to this sort of event. A little early to say definitely, but the initial reaction didn't seem to provide anything valuable. I mean, it's hard being from one side of the world because video games side of things is so much different. I mean, even though I'm still trying to engage in tabletop and trying to learn more about Pathfinder system. Yes, I'm. <laughs> um, and, and I wish that the the world's would come together more. Mm -hmm. The only time it seems we ever come together in general is when one studio says, hey, we're really influenced by d d or we're really influenced by some old mm -hmm. system. We want to in inherit it like in uh, Final Fantasy. We want to inherit it in EverQuest or Worlds of Warcraft, whatever it may be. The problem is we don't talk as a community. It's like, okay, you're on this side, we're on this side. Mm -hmm. We don't want to engage. We're not interested. So from my standpoint, I think this actually would be fundamentally good even in the world of video games because in the video game world, you actually have GMs incorporated within the MMOs. So if, if a player's doing a quest, for example, and let's say he loses, I'm just going to say some random object, uh, Journey, right? And it, it's important to his quest. But he needs these boots in order to fulfill this quest. Well, let's say for whatever reason, some dynamic in the game takes those away from you, even though you earn them, the GM's got to engage. Because if you don't have that equipment, how do you continue the quest? Right. So in a sense, I mean, even though it's on a smaller scale, this actually brings in a scale where basically not only are you using your mental creativity, but your logic creativity to actually bring forth a concept of the game. Design-wise, just a brief comment because we're getting tangential here to an extent. But I asked you deliberately because I knew the computer oriented and I wanted to see what your reaction was to this over there. Um, 
When I'm designing difficult challenges, I've learned to put them adjacent to the main story path so that they do not absolutely put a wall in front if you can't solve this one thing. You know, it all turns on one thing. On the other hand, there is the escalating build system that was actually begun by a guy in Britain using hexes on the board game, that you could take these hexes and then change them and escalate them and build them up to a certain extent involving certain prerequisites and working towards the final objective in terms of terrain. This got retranslated, especially by Pathfinder and others, into the build system where you have certain incremental objectives reaching that, reinforced by your end of the scale when you're looking Stacking methodology for game design is one thing, but here we're looking more at the experience. But I think your comments are very valid on the topic as well. I'm not going to waste my time babbling about it. Is that you're trying to look at that interactive experience from the point of view of the live face to face and through and put in the same joys and attractions that are the reasons that they built this thing from 40 some years ago into a global phenomenon and change the face of computer gaming and everything. There's, as I nattered at you earlier, there are these mental concepts involved and you discover that these are all working underneath as building blocks of everything you're doing, I'm doing, and so forth. So the combination is interesting for me. And so we got a comment from Sean. I engaged with a big face guy and got that at the table exactly for what you're saying. Lots of potential for the community. I'm trying to be the one to push that. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Could you make sure we're friends on Facebook or something yeah, and, and uh, continue this conversation yeah. later? Yeah. It's a huge important thing. So. I believe very strongly in time. Yeah, I don't carry cards. I go through cards if I carry them like you with the match. <laughs> People take them home and put them in their books. So, um, I mostly wanted to hear about him, about the experience, because it was an extensive computer game. So, any other comments on the experience? I'm finding it interesting because it's, I've always found it to be a good thing to see how other GM's styles work and what they focus on because it lets me reevaluate how I do things and try to improve them that way. And then also getting the comments from the other GM's that are also doing the same thing kind of just makes that much more. We've had outrageous times with this format at some cons that draw more people from further away, you know, and get like one guy from Oz from Australia is offering his DMing input compared to a couple Americans, some Canadian and a European or two. Then you just the scope of what you're getting is wow, different styles. Uh, yeah. Situation is really classically simple. Um, 
Did you have a preferred setting? Let me ask that because that's open ended. Um, we'll just go generic fantasy okay. setting. Yeah. Um, we're in a typical med medieval village. Or we are, for whatever reason, getting ready to go out on an adventure. Um, since it is overland, we have acquired mounts, uh, equipment, this and that, but we're still, for whatever reason, deciding on how to resolve certain variables, which I will leave in your hands if that's <coughs> okay. Is that enough to work with? That's anything? plenty, I, yeah, that's plenty okay. of um, All right, does anyone have any preferences on what they would like to be playing or acting? Well, I'm just a generic player here, basically. Okay. All right. Dark Elf Wizard. Alright, so we've got two fighters and one kind of lizard. Alright, so <laughs> yeah, well, it, it very very well could be. Um, cool. Well, you uh, you are all in town, you've gathered your supplies you're ready to go, but you don't have the information that you want on background for exactly where you're heading. So you get out a rumor that there is a cave somewhere in the hills. And that cave holds an artifact that you're looking for for the king of the land. And that's pretty much what you know, other than the, the artifact is supposed to be some sort of a chalice. So. I'm the wizard. I can find anything out of you. Anyone's help. Alright, well, what are you planning to do to find what you need? We're just going to go. Let's take care you just, of it. You just want to leave town? We just want to leave town. We don't need any protection. Alright, so the wizard's saying that. That's telling everybody else we did. Let's get down. The next one starts here at 11. All these two are having this discussion in the middle of the street in front of the inn. What are you two? Wait, waiting to go. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you both are pulling mugs? Yeah. So, I mean, it's after 12. After midnight, right? So. I would say you guys are headed into the inn while these two are arguing in the street and you're just grabbing a drink and waiting for them to make their minds up. The tournament's not started running in the theater, so we've got the tables over here. I say, let's get that town's first, send them to get the recon, and let's go do our mission. Okay, I just want to let you know. Okay, well, as you two finish making this decision, you look around and realize that your party mates are not with you. Their horses are tied up on the, uh, next to the trough. They're not there. I guess we should go find them. So what I was thinking is that she put the charge up for So I divided that by 12. And zooming into the inn, the two of you are at the bar. You've got your drinks. We ready to go? Do it. These two aren't inside yet. They're outside trying to figure out where you are. Two of you are drinking on the inside. Just drinking or? Yeah. Okay. What are you guys doing? We got a mission. We got to do it. Now. Were they there? Or they just there? came in the door. Oh, all right. All right. Shutting Are we ready yet? Let's go. Let's do this. Can I have this to go? Oh, no, we haven't got a styrofoam yet. All right. <laughs> all right. So, as you guys go out and, and kind of stand next to your horses, what are you doing? I'm making a mixer. I'm just fine. Fair enough. Well, I know the two of you had made the decision to try and find someone to lead you into the hills. Alright, so I pick you, townsperson. Who's I got here Huh? What do you want? You're going to lead us to the cave! I have no idea what you're doing. Well, you're going to burn really quick. It's basically a ten-year-old boy that you pointed to, and he's just kind of standing there. He was carrying a, he had a bag over his shoulder, looked like he was heading into town with something. He's just confused beyond belief. I thought he understood the logical disaster. Well, apparently he is confu confused and flabbergasted. Do either of you have any thoughts on your monk? Are you with monk? So, are you with monk? You're the wizard, right? On your wizard assaulting a ten-year-old child for directions. 
I mean, we're doing it now, so. Okay. Can we go again? Let's just go. Forget it. Right, let's just let's, go. Let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> All right. So you head out of the village, and I'm assuming Wizard is leading. The two of you are. Wizards always lead. They're not good yeah. for doing it. Well, I'd mean. like both of you to give me a notice check, and you to give me an intelligence check, and you to give me a survival check. Oh. And so you're ro all rolling basically d12s. You're at a minus two. I basically don't notice anything because I don't care. I want to go somewhere. Okay. I got an eight. All right. And two. Awesome. But wait, can I use my luck to reroll that, right? That's how that works? That is normally how that works in a combat scenario. <coughs> in this case, it, it's it's more for flair, so okay. don't worry too much about it. You want to use up your luck on this little something on the line? I'm being stupid. I mean, there's no mm -hmm. reason to hold it isn't that bad. I have really anything good. I probably would be fine. Well, at this point in time, you were just trying to figure out if you actually wanted him leading you through the forest or oh, not. So, at this point, you're fine with him leading you through the forest. You think it's a great idea. And you are leading them basically through every bush and bramble you can imagine. And the two of you are kind of watching this scenario. Both of you are not really caring. You're just kind of following along. But you're staying out of the brambles. He's kind of being torn up. And she, likewise, is kind of following in his footsteps. I will say, though, that because of your notice, Jack, you actually notice that they're stomping through the trees, and there is something off to the side that seems to be following you and paying attention to you. Following? What? Do you say anything about this? Uh, yeah. Something that does. I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. Draw a weapon. You draw your weapon? Sure. All right, at which point in time, there's a screech from the woods as soon as you draw your weapon, and uh, we're going into combat. Okay, and we'll follow the best uh, What did we find, by the way? Um, basically, it was a, there was a group of goblins that were kind of following you, and they attack on, on your way. You were... All right, well, let's see. Once again, I'll lead off. Um, I'm going to start pulling out more stuff mm -hmm. here. You know, the first one is just a warm up. Right. Um, Let's see. I got distracted right away by your leg and your hand movements. Okay. Physical elements. Now, we haven't gotten into physical elements here because most of you are just sitting around talking about it. Uh, I have worked extensively with two tall people who have developed methodologies to bend over more so that they are not as physically as imposing and thus can achieve parity somehow. And they wrestle with this all the time, you know, the 6'5 plus, you know. I don't want my height to be the issue in this conversation. You know, okay. And you get into a lot of things like that. But related there too, if that's a natural thing for you, hanging on your leg is fine. I think that what got me was wiggling your fingers or doing something down here hanging on to you. Okay. If you could consciously channel that into bring the hands up and go ahead and let them go, I think the hand movements could make you more dynamic, more engaged. So okay. we're all the way down to little stuff like this, yes, in, in the cinema. Oh, that's fine. Um, you handed the ball to the party and let us like play tag football and sort of dick around with minor whatevers mm -hmm. and delayed the start of the adventure, I thought, significantly, to no real purpose. Um, sometimes at the beginnings of adventures, setting out, you want to establish a pace and help them keep that pace. So, the, what I call the balance of power. You ideally run an adventure that has energized and inspired the players to such an extent they grab a ball, maybe two or three <laughs> balls, and they're going in several directions at once. But hey, that, that's Fat City. That's where you want to be as a game master, more doing more wrangling and rodeo than <coughs> Come on, get your asses in here. You handed us the ball a little too early, and as a result, we got side into you know, guys at the bar and off the ball. Okay. And it is generally better to not put up with that <laughs> in the beginning of a scenario. If they choose, the party chooses, and especially, this kicks in then to rule of cool. If something, element that you inserted inspires somebody and we start pyramiding on this, 
brief anecdote to illustrate that. In early RPGA games, 1981, we designed ever one scenario, and it started in a bar. Uh, and since it was a voting system on who did the best job role playing, they got into the bar scenario and never left the bar. And four hours later, had a perfectly successful role playing adventure, but never left the bar in the process. Got their votes in, participated, but you know, screw the tournament, screw the design. No, we're having a great time, and that can be valid if the impetus is there, if it is holding everybody, if there was, there was a great game master in that case who wrangled them and, okay, grabbed a hold of the pot seeds that they came up with. Your absolute ideal in this entire environment is the user generated view. Absolutely. When you, when you, but you were hoping we would run with the ball a little too early before you inspired us to do so. And that was Sean's, Sean's comment essentially too, was letting mm -hmm. the party bury themselves rather than encouraging them right. to get on. Now, the worst thing that you said was, what are you doing? Whenever you do that, you're presuming a lot of things. That all of you have been listening to me carefully, that all of you have been catching every, all the intonations, and that you can see inside the head, and you can verbally say you're still tracking. <laughs> Always a false stress. Okay. <laughs> assume the opposite. Assume you screwed up. Assume that there are elements missing, and that we're each painting our own slightly different picture of the situation. So you need to focus on what's most critical, right around the characters, the media, interactive effects, etc. Flesh that out a little better. But as I say, then um, many times when you ask an open-ended question like that, what are you doing? You're presuming all these things the knowledge of the situation, the visualization, the background info, and unless you have a really encyclopedic memory and are working through a chink, chink, chink on the points to make and the clues to present. As some scenarios are written, you know, if you're working off a of revisit of the players, it may be that cool and that, that tricky. But generally, you're far better saying, would you like to do this or this or something else? Present them with one or two preferably two, maybe even three, specific options to choose. Make it multiple choice instead of an essay class, basically. And leave the door open, or something else. Okay. Now that's where the programming gets all hairy as hell with it, or something else. You know, it's much easier for you to pick from this palette. You know, all right. And that's the challenge on your end. But uh, as a kind of, you can see the, the thing here. It's basic psychology. If they haven't kept up with you, et cetera, then they're lost. They're just deer in the headlights when it's, what are you doing? Uh, I don't know, ask him. You know, pass the buck, anything, get me out of this, and that's an uncomfortable situation. So let me leave, even if just to a slight extent. Um, you were real good at a variety of other elements. Uh, once we got going and heading out there into the woods, I had a good feel of who we were, where we were, you lost track a little on who was there. That's not a thing. Um, I talked about the control factor. I thought you had enough control at that point by the time you finished, but the loss of control really on. You tried to get them going to some extent. You guys if had, you had been more argumentative and presented him with a problem to solve instead of a, okay, beat, 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 done, and you both turned and looked at him, speaking in terms of beats and dialogues and, and the parsing of the conversation. But you handed the ball back to him. What I want you to do is get into something like that and refuse to let go and let's see how he can break loose from him, generally, et cetera, for future enactments. Um, all clear on my points? Yeah. Okay, that was a little harsh, but oh, it's fine. It's good that up me. Um, <laughs> your response, what you feel were your best points, your worst points, that sort of thing. Or any rebuttal. Um, I definitely can say that I had issues in drawing drawing the party into doing um, more or less anything other than continuing to let the people that were mm -hmm. arguing to argue. That seems to be about the extent on that one because uh, I just had issues with getting the two of you interested in doing something, but I didn't have much to go on off of the player interaction, right. so I was having issues coming up with something to draw the players in. It's mm -hmm. kind of more. And if, I mean, we all have our strengths and weaknesses as game masters. Now, I seem to be a little <coughs> fast on the lip, but, but if it helps you come up with a system of point, 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 you know, four places, 
uh, cue cards. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have worked in my earlier days, especially, and in my more frenetic days at conventions and things, running like major tournaments. I'll have my bullet points on file cards, you know, and I'll just do think that work through, make sure I don't forget something because I got too much going. Mm -hmm. uh, if that works for you, find a system that works for you mm -hmm. of whatever type, maybe it's digital. Yeah. Have index I like something in What did you feel you were the best at of the various elements? Probably, it seemed like I was able to balance off of people's roles fairly well. So, mm -hmm. as far as when they were going a certain direction, helping them with that direction or, or encouraging what they were wanting to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then, once things, as you had said earlier, once things got moving, being able to keep everyone get get everyone together once things were moving it was the initial lead part of the was. art of game master is sensing the social inertia if you will this big solid ball and pushing pushing and if you do the right things it'll start rolling but don't assume it'll keep rolling you know you've got to make a call as to when you still have to be pushing and how much and when it starts rolling by itself, and if it's in the right direction, being able to deflect it, you know, like in curling or something, get it to go slightly different. Or, like I say, the ideal is they grab a couple of the right balls and some dynamic players are driving, then your job becomes more keeping the balance of interaction. Okay, they're being real quiet, he's being too dominant, and interjecting occasionally to bring more parity to the experience. Okay. Uh, input. Um, one of the things, I, I really like how you did the voices and the characterization. Ah, that's the one I uh, forgot to Yeah, that. and that works with what he was talking about, the physicality, you had your 15. You point. made great eye contact and a great look of that kid, as well as the voice. Yeah. So you have the ability to do that. So I'm just mm -hmm. going, I've kind of given up on it over the years. Yeah, so. and I think like he was talking about channeling that, that fidgety into a character energy, mm -hmm. I think will we'll really take it pretty far. Um, I could have liked to have known who that was before the voice, because I got the voice, and then you describe the character. And that was me realizing I had to describe the character. And then it, it happens, and you can, you can set it up like that. I was like, he didn't ask. He just kind of went with it. And that, that's a thing to do, but it's something to be, to be aware of. So the, the voice was really good. Um, and then that, that super engaging right there. Um, oh, yeah, the look was yeah. dynamite. I was like, that was, that was great. There was, I could feel the force of it. You know. Um, there were some issues with pacing, mm -hmm. um, specifically me and him were just back to nothing in particular mm -hmm. while they were able to just take away the party. And yeah, uh, I was tracking on you and I got us into a you know, backgrounded situation we were, we were to see fairly, how could get clearly us. clearly oh. bored and just kind of mm -hmm. waiting, for, waiting to be pushed in some sort of direction. And we were never, until we got pulled out, we were just kind of back and forth, content to be in ourselves, but we weren't really engaged in ways. And in... If I had gone much further, I would start a conversation. We would start having our <laughs> yeah, own game, yeah. you know, entirely separately, and then you'd have to And I had an idea on something I could have done, but I came up with it right as they finished their thing and we were okay. pulling out anyway, so. Yeah, or even, um, like, drawing us into their thing. I wasn't going to draw you guys into their well, thing. I was going to have someone grab both your shoulders and start a fight. Well, <laughs> what, what was happening with them is they were doing something interesting, but then you were barring us from interacting. I'm like, okay, you're not here yet, or we're not here yet. And that could have been a way to pull us into whatever this whole thing is going on. But instead we were actually separated when we had a chance of being together. Okay. When your comment about having the bar fight, once again, that gets into mm. how to put this. Ideally, for a game master, you want a real world. Everything is predictable. You know exactly what's going to happen and when and everything is set. Ideally, from a player point of view, if they want the fun. They don't really care, in most cases, whether it's a real world, sandbox, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they want events, action, and story. You know, no matter how much you're into crunch, you want some story in it to be right. involved. So the more control you try for is the same as the Jurassic Park religion. You never have control. So you got to sense how much control is appropriate. And again, social inertia at the table. If they're going too slow or in the wrong direction, figuring out how to tweak it and accelerate it. And then slow it down and relish the situation when it is an epic whatever. Something right. worth spending the time on, whether it's rule, pool, or plot, or whatever. Remember, there's not just one parameter here on success. You know, a lot of ways to win. Yeah, and that was a note I put down right before you started talking about the inertia of momentum, um, that, that momentum of the game. You, it was a bit slow to start, but I think once we started on the actual adventure part, we were going to get more through. Kathy, input? I like. So um, I liked that, and uh, other than that, yeah, the piecing was a big thing. I'm all about the piecing myself. So. What do you 
going to do to fix it? Um, I also think I have a little bit of a tendency to put just give the power to the players. I set up the situation mm -hmm. and then I do the what do you do? So mm -hmm. I should I should direct them a little bit and then they like to do A, B, C, so yeah, that is something. Now if they got a thing going, yeah. you don't even have to say what do you want to do, yeah. what are you doing? But hey, cool, groove on it, you know. But we've all seen this, you know, it'll perk along, it'll build, maybe they have some laughs, things are good, and it'll start winding down. And then at that point, that's where you step in and tweak it and start pushing it in a different direction. But it's just, Spidey sense of uh, being aware of the social energy of the game and which way it's going and at what point do you intervene. You don't want to take the fun away from them, but they instinctively look to you as game master, as an authority figure. Okay? You are the one de facto in charge of the table. You're the game master. So you're walking this line, you know, back and forth, the whole thing. More from you. I can see you're making a lot of notes, but they're yeah. in your head. You have that kind of a head. Yeah, I can, uh, I can tell. Yeah. That's, that, that's the technical side of me. Um, I think the big thing is, though, game masters normally don't engage on a, a secondary level, so that was impressive. That character bringing in that life to it was intriguing. I, I don't see many people do that. That's, just, that's me, and maybe that's something that amazes the seeds. Specifically the kid. The yeah, the kid, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that I, I, I think the biggest negative point for me is that. Never let the player take full control of a situation like that. I mean, give them some time to breathe and interact the group, but never let them take it over to the point where they're almost running the game themselves because they're putting too much emphasis on what they're doing and focusing way too much on their character, ignoring everything else. Because as my role, I wanted to project that, but I should never have full control of the game. That was the only thing that, if I would have done different, I would have basically, I would have engaged a little bit more and said, well, well, hold up, okay, let's get some interaction from the rest of the players and, you know, stop taking control of my game. Yeah. But that's the sweet thing. On the other hand, one of the most righteous experiences in, in the 80s, we had built RPGA to a point and players had gotten ranks back here and they made a second level third level player in the tournaments. And once they hit third, we decided we needed to have a master's tournament. And long story short, never mind what it was about. One of the top players did his thing, laid down his role, just enthralled everybody for about three minutes. And then set up the next guy at the table with a setup line, that, I mean like a billboard, you know, here you go, give me your best. And the game master was smart enough to just sit back and okay, I've identified what in the interaction phase is going on here. They're all establishing their characterizations, their skills and role playing, and they are so good, they are not using a dominance technique to try and control the thing. They are merely controlling within their own sphere, which is their right, and then handing off that ball. Now this, yeah, it's beautiful, but you, this is a, such a high ideal you can't count on. So how do you program or otherwise lead towards that? Yeah, I'd say saying never doesn't seem right, but I definitely should be capable of pulling it away when it's obviously not going in a good direction. Part of what I'm saying is differentiate between control of their characterization and control of the environment. And being able to sense, okay, yeah, it's a detour, but it's only a three minute detour, and nobody's fidgeting, everybody's going on. Then you are succeeding in entertainment, in engagement, and all these other factors. Out of character, I was genuinely entertained. Mm -hmm. It comes down sometimes to at what point do you say, hey, remember we got a plot? Versus, yeah, we're sandboxing, we're interacting, we're having fun. The joy of the game is in the interaction. So again, this is an art form, it's a judgment call. And as default authority figure, it's up to you as game master to go with your instincts here. Right here, we're trying to polish those instincts and bring out different ways of looking at something. Any other input on uh, his performance? Uh, give me a few things to think about already. We're just going to take a short break and recharge a little. Who's going to be going next? Kathy, want to give it a shot? All right. What are you going to be running in the genre? Uh, I also like fantasy, but okay. I'm a big fan of the so I'm pretty sure Okay. Uh, is everybody real familiar with that? It's basic fantasy. Okay. So, figure basic fantasy. So, We'll get into that when we come back. Once again, thank you for budgeting uh, part of your precious con time and your Sunday morning time here with us. Uh, I like a lot of what I'm getting. I'm getting a way cool different viewpoint from him. It's been a while since I had a hardcore computer programmer and wannabe 
game master, I guess, uh, as part of the thing, or at least looking at this side of experiences, informative and education. Everybody raving here again with Helen. Who's Cer certainly good uh, work in this field. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. I guess these we'll goals will need your budget environment and the additional capacities of your environment. Way to go. Thank you for it. Thank you for it.
about this game with us today. <laughs> Uh, he used, used to run a face-to-face -face game for a major labor leader in Chicago, a bank vice president, a couple other one of the top attorneys down there, and they just wanted to revert, turn into teen kids again. They didn't want to think about anything like this. Just to smash more time. But the ma my main motivation... They want. What they want is combat, and that's all they yeah. want. My main motivation, of course, is uh, expanding the experience, uh, getting people to realize, those who want to take this approach, how valuable this is in mental training, in general life experiences and things. It's not just a game. It is a game, but it's not just a game. It's a game, but games are important for more than just recreation of training and useful. So as I have mentioned a couple of times, just a free plug, later this year I plan to start a 501c3 nonprofit for the benefit of hobby gaming overall, globally. And First off, plug all of us into one another. Okay, we, there's no methodology for us to all find one another. So that's step one, and find out what's going on in the gaming hobby and build from that, from uh, conventions, charity events, whatever, all the way down to uh, 50 people getting together in a church basement that has a kitchen, uh, you know, nice and cheap for a one day something, all the way on up to six, seventy thousand people at Gen Con, you know, and all the steps in between. Uh, we see articles in Forbes and Business Weekly that have recognized some of these cerebral skills that are emphasized by these interactive cooperative games as opposed to competitive. So, fantasy up next. Um, Normally, but we've gamed together what three times now. So uh, okay, cool. Um, we have traveled through woods, whip mounts, etc. Mid-level characters, uh, not total wimps, but not super powerful. But we are hot on the trail of somebody or other out in the woods. We are expecting a big battle soon, so this is like a prep phase before we'll probably stop it when we hit the actual en encounter. So try and delay that part and focus more on the organizational aspects and handle the table mechanics and things like that. Okay. Give you a little more than others because you you said you were fairly young enough, enough, so enough to work with. You need how many? Okay. A couple of general trips uh, based on the interaction. I mean, you know you need to establish identity, the scene. Uh, remember other sensory aspects, time of year, weather, smells, you know, all sorts of stuff. But as you feel comfortable, you know, touch all those bases, but keep that scope in mind. We about said? No, nope, this happens all the time. <laughs> Sometimes this has ended up in group photo shots, exchanges of personal info, and the info, we, oh, we got to talk later. You know, some of these events end up wild. Okay, now everybody understand the situation. I will also ask just if you want to give me just a class of race real quick. <coughs> no. More than hell. Class. Okay. This is going to look bad. Sneaky thing. Mm. You can uh, do one. Ha. Keeply Wizard. Wow, this is actually oh, oh, So, you've been writing for about a half a day. It's winter, so it's been cold. Your sure. instrument has you been filling the water? journey with mostly pleasant tunes. You haven't got proficient with that one yet. You're still working on it. And uh, you've been looking for the orc encampment, like I said, for about the half a day. Um, you know your close. You're not exactly sure, but you know you only have a about six hours before you're actually there. So um, any sort of preparations, any buffs, anything that you would like to do, um, maybe set up a rest for the night, 
I think you ought to put that bloody instrument away before you give away our position. Caterwauling. Endless caterwauling. <laughs> I'm serious. Put it away, lad. Oh, thank you. Still think these orcs were distracted. Well, he's eyeballing that. Who should be going the other way? Why don't we send him the other way, and then we'll come in on the sides? That's an idea. Well, you, you could probably find out where they are without them knowing, wouldn't you? Me? No, I kill things. No, no, uh, yeah, I could probably see them. I don't want to get too far from the group. I, I can make him I can make him invisible, too. Make him oh, well, that's all right. Thank you. Alright, so you're casting invisibility and you're gonna go sneak off and maybe do some retcon? Sure, I love being invisible. Because <laughs> no. if I attack, I'll become visible, so that means I won't attack, which means I'll stay in the shadows, which means I don't have to do anything. So it's, it's great. Awesome. So are you going to the orc encampment or are you checking the direction? Um, well, I want to go the other direction, but I'll, I'll go out and make a show of scouting, but really stay pretty close to the party. Oh, okay, okay, so it's more. So other than plucking along on your instrument, what you good for? Yeah. Why do we bring you home? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I hear that he's gone farther? Can I make a, a check to see if he's actually gone scouting? Go ahead and give me an investigation check. Investigation. Well, I'm very quiet. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's invisible, so, so, so. But I'm, I'm listening. You're, you're listening. And now that I cast silence on him, <laughs> you can actually hear him. I now. can actually hear yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Tieflings have turned up. <laughs> Maybe thaumaturgy to you. Um, yeah, so I got an 18 with my bonuses, which should um, pass. Uh, you're so I should be able to hear that he's here. You should. However, with the invisibility bonus and the fact that he's well trained and hiding himself. But I'm listening, but he's invisible. You are listening. However, he's very well trained in having light footfalls, and that does factor into the DC. You think you might hear him off in the distance, but you also hear some crackling and twigs, so you're not sure if it's him or maybe just some wildlife. Okay. Maybe winter, but things still have to eat. Alrighty, I'm, uh, I guess we're sitting up here for a bit. Well, let's start a fire. Get some, get some meat roasted. Well, that was easy. <laughs> awesome. You, you have any, any rabbits or any, anything else you can conjure out of yourself or something? Well, it, he's supposed to be our hunter because he's the thief. Yeah, but he's scouting. Maybe he can get something back. Uh, I know he's just hanging out nearby, so he can get us food. Fine, I'm just going to put some jerky on the fire. We'll just eat that up. Oh, we need the bar for oil. Oh, and don't call me Jerry. Uh, well. As you all are kind of <laughs> starting to cook this, you all start to feel power in the distance. Well, alright. About time to get some real meat going. And I really appreciate you silencing him. It's probably those orcs in the park. I would say about this point, you're probably returning to the park. Okay. I'll go ahead and have you give me an investigation check to see what you actually got. You don't get a choice in this? Well, I guess how long would you want to be gone? It's been about an hour or so at this point. Okay. I'd rather still be gone. Okay. But if I'm still just the investigation check. No, I'm actually fairly nearby, but I'm overhearing anything. Oh, so you're I'm going to try and do another perception check to see if I can hear him nearby. Alright, I'll let you do another perception check. Uh, what do you think? Is it far? There are wolves probably in the area. Maybe someone else. That's about all you're getting right now. This jerky shit. Alright, I'm just gonna it, drop it in the fire. I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna stomp off in the forest. Bring back some wolves. I'll bring back something for you. I don't know if I'm bringing back wolves. Bring back, bring him back. See if you can find him. He's scouting ahead. We're a ways off. We know he's from your bomb. I don't know what you're talking about. You haven't actually might have put him in the Oh, can I, can I dispel my invisibility? Um, uh, yes. It's a bonus action. It is a bonus action. Yeah, I'm nowhere near. Yeah. You can find me to dispel me. And it just dispels the image. But, well, the magic you put is on him, so dispelling him is right, something you do. However, if you look at the mechanics of the actual spell, you can drop it, but it is more than just that. I can do it as a free action, so I should be able to That's considering it in combat, it's not a combat situation. It would still technically be an action, but it might be a little bit more difficult being unable to pinpoint the exact location. So I would make you roll an arcana for this one. Roll an arcana? Mm -hmm. Even though he's like right there? You don't know that though. You know that. Can Your I character. Feel the spell? 
you cannot feel the spell. It's not a connection so much as it is like enchanting an item. Well, but if I can't, if I can't feel it, then how can I just enchant it? Well, typically when you're just enchanting it, it's an in combat thing, so you can yeah. see the line of sight of the person who can see. Actually, that's only in front of I just want to dis- I just want to dispel him because he's not doing anything. I want him to actually scout. Yeah. 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 So at this point, I'll say that you can go ahead and just dispel him. What? Oh, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Didn't find anything out there, but I did hear some wolves or something. Why did I hear something? One second, let me pull my britches up. <laughs> So <laughs> <laughs> I roll a one. You're a little preoccupied at the moment. Pull up. Pull up. Eleven bonuses. Five, eleven. Four is just for. Meat smells really good. Meat smells great, guys. Yeah. But there's some howls. They're they're a little bit closer than they were before. Well, I didn't find any wolves out there, but I found some other stuff back there. If you really want to go looking. <laughs> Well, heads up. Sounds like you're getting closer. I'm going to have some dinner. Needs a little burn. <laughs> well, well, well done. All right, well, we can have dinner. What so just FDA guidelines. All you said something about you didn't see anything? Uh, no, nothing real nearby. They were off a ways. Okay. They don't have any spies keeping an eye on us or anything that I found. Well, sounds good to me. You heard the wolves. They're still a ways over. Awesome. Well... Let's have some dinner and we can figure out what we're doing tomorrow or later. Yeah, that's SOP for experience adventures. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you a time. Um, and as usual, I'll go first. Um, unless somebody else would prefer at this point. Now you see how the way everything is. You've been picking it all up real good. All right. Um, anyway, my eyes are a little right. flaky, so. Don't engage the rules lawyer to that level. Establish your authority, move on. It's okay to say that's my ruling for now. We'll look it up during the break. Okay. okay. Um, so, oh, yeah, oh, the first one's on there too. Okay, uh, okay. the first one too. Yeah, two notes. Okay. Sorry, I just always read the last one, assuming the lines do. Right. right. Uh, there's a classic storytelling and GM trope. When all else fails, somebody starts shouting. Yes. Mm -hmm. all right. Oh, shooting. Sorry, shooting, I thought shooting. that was a cue. Right. Shooting, shouting. Um, first off, good setting establishment, taking, taking a bit for that. In fairness, in response to a lot of the input so far, so it's top of your head, but a nice job setting it. All of a sudden, it was winter, and I got good, great, it was sort of a twist there. That, okay, oh wow, okay, winter, you know, it gave me something to react to uh, that I hadn't preconceived or whatever. Now, the rules thing. Um, many ways to handle rules, lawyers. Uh, they always show up. Um, you have some games like Pathfinder and Full Five with Feats, etc., where it's very rules dependent, where part of the joy to many of us with slight OCD tendencies is to immerse in that rule matrix and master it and feel so good about mastering it and so forth. Whether it's the uh, pyramidic feat structure in Pathfinder and reaching that ultimate goal or some other variation. But what do you do about the disruptive role of gets into that. Now, yes, that was an extreme case. Got into Sorry. an extended conversation <laughs> ending up. No, nice job. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah that was really good. <clears throat> yeah, we all have a handle on it here. So yes. no. One idea, there are no, first off, there are no easy solutions for it because everybody's different as to why are they doing the story. It may be this OCD tendency of we got to do it all by the book, and certainly when I'm playing Ticket to Ride later today, we're not going to pick and choose what rules we want. We're going to take, you know, this is how you play the game. That's a perfectly valid mindset, and that is very widespread in both role playing and board game communities. And then you have wackos like me and certain others that just want to go free form, and you know, you don't need rules and emphasizing that. So these are two extremes. Sometimes with a rules lawyer, when you recruit the rules lawyer and even grant that level of authority to the rules lawyer, even when he's wrong and you know it, the net result, as I see it, is a minor glitch in the matrix that you pass by quickly. Second, you resolve things and keep the action going, even if you resolve it wrong. 
The primary counter arguments are consistency, blah, 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 which I'll touch on a second, uh, shortly. But the net effect to disobeying rules is usually beneficial in a social situation like this. Okay. Now, one of the ways to do it is to recruit the rules lawyer, like I say, and say, tell you what, I propose that you be the rules expert for our gaming group or for this session or something like that. And suddenly, you flip them from a disruptive force to an ally. Suddenly, they're being dependent on If it's a need for attention that is driving this, rather than the have ever, all the ducks in a row and all the rules right, if there's a need for attention in there, bang, you got that solved just with that maneuver. And then your sense of balance, the tightrope, is how often on the referrals and working with that individual, in this case saying, give me your best guess, we'll look that up later to apply to the campaign. But for now, we need to keep it moving. When you establish the social context, limited time, everybody took time off from work, or this is our a Thursday night game, or whatever, you know, come on. We all implicitly agree to an unspoken compact. We are gathering as a group to cooperate, seeking mutual, beneficial, fun entertainment. So you want to bring up politics? This is disruptive. Real world politics is disruptive to the group. Leave it at the door. It's my policy. There are other ways of handling that also. That, that's fine once we are great. OK, let's grab something and then the politics start fine, fine. But as long as you segregate that from the human experience, there are a lot of ways to do it. Uh, but one method among many on handling the rules lawyer is recruiting. Absolutely brought in recruit them. And even when you really know it's wrong, you turn it over in your head and say, will this seriously affect the game? Or not? So you got to prioritize the effect of that. Sorry, the manager rule. was just, just the bottom one, right? <laughs> so his comment is, but in this case, his rules lawyering was for a personal gain or anti-other right. no, anti player player Anticipating me again. That's a serious um, issue. Um, and actually, I also have a comment on that, too, in that with this one, you want to free my dog, Mr. Free yes, he was rules lawyering, but he was playing with out of character information, and that was mm -hmm. that's always something that's, that's going to be problematic at, at a table where you've got a oh, you're throwing all sorts of problems <laughs> in it. And generally, the way I I've found works best for focusing on that is you tell them, look, you cannot use out of character knowledge. And if they keep going, you're going to have to enforce it and say, you can't do that because you're using out-of-character knowledge. And if it continues going, eventually it comes down to a, you're going to have to leave or you're going to have to follow my rules as the GM. You that's ultimately, that's ultimately you the will rule. ultimately find some people who do not acknowledge that unspoken compact of respecting others and cooperating, compromising your desires. And there are some people that have never had the, I'm the GM, you have to follow my rules, told them. It's kind of rarer in today's uh, tabletop settings, but you do have some people that don't realize that, and you have to kind of push it a little bit on. And my point on that is perhaps your group can handle this as this sort of level of discussion to a limited extent. Remember that the people who play these games are generally more intelligent, more self aware, more respectful, more social. Okay. And if you take a moment, pull the whole tenor of the conversation up to a higher level and say, okay, look, look, everybody think about this a second. We've agreed to get together, you know, and you give them that spiel. We've agreed to not disrupt things. Trust in people. Trust their higher brain functions to perceive this and say, yeah, you're right. Self-government, self-policing. Don't assume they require exterior influences to slap them into law. I have had excellent results counting on people's honor, counting on people's intelligence, their their good heartedness. And don't overlook that. You don't, it, you don't have to go with the stick. You know, you can go with the right. and the well, that's what I was saying. Take a few steps before then saying that's kind of mm -hmm. not really in your character's purview. They don't know that he's doing this. Before yeah. you reach the point where you're like, okay, you're yeah, I'm not rebutting you, I'm just offering additional. Right. right. Yeah. And the, the specific thing I was going for was I was w I was willing to put a card in and wanted to advance the story when I realized that he wasn't doing anything to help. I was trying to get him on track. I was just a rules lawyer to do it. I was like, no, no, he's not playing our right. game. Because I was engaged in all the other stuff. On the other point there, or one of the other points, there were multiple levels that came up here. PC knowledge versus player knowledge. Now, my personal philosophy is we all play this game on a player to player, character to character, meta game, and meta universe. Levels. There's four different conscious levels. We toss in a joke about Star Wars. Okay, you're up in the meta universe level. You point out a specific game facet, rules, arguments, etc. Then that's meta game per se. 
But in every case, one of the objectives and the one feature of better players is the ability to segregate player knowledge of course. And an occasional reminder can help. Once again, trusting that people will take this ball, take it to heart, and run with it to say, no, that's player knowledge. If we have to, we'll go to private notes to the DM again if you're unable to handle that division. Okay. Or we can just say it openly, and I want to count on you to ignore that on the part of your character until the character has the knowledge. Now, this is a very sensitive area. Some people just can't deal with that level of abstraction and separating the knowledge, in which case you use the past the notes and separate conversation. Let's go off to the side and use all that. that sort of with a finely tuned and finely honed game, you see some outrageously great role playing. They know there's this critical threat about to happen, but they character has no knowledge of it and they're blissfully like, role playing the ignorance. You know? yeah. Yeah. You, you can hype that up somewhere. and you do that once or twice and they appreciate the fun of that. Yeah, yeah, I know, but the character doesn't. And this becomes an internal conflict thing and all kinds of stuff. The other thing in players, characters, game meta, world meta, is what you were up to. Your character was what? Silence? Okay. You, the player, shouldn't be silent. And you should have brought that out and emphasized that, okay, you're mixing you, the player, up with the character. I don't want to see you sitting there quiet because your character is in a good situation. Or I'm welcoming, I'm seeking, I will try and get some input out of you when your character is separate from what the others are doing in that player-to-player -player interactive experience. Now, some game masters are, no, you're paralyzed, you can't say a thing. I consider that very unfair. You need to make your call. If your players can handle the separation of the different roles, the different levels, then fine. So you, again, no simple solution on that one. But you shouldn't have let him sit there and say nothing. Okay. Instead, just if you have to, you know, again, being aware of his personal boundaries and level of comfort, try to point out to him, come on, I want you to say something. And he says, but I'm silenced. No, your character is silenced. Just emphasize that dichotomy. And that can lead to a solution. Uh, that's yeah. most why I had, and I didn't want to dominate this. I'm sorry, but there were so many different cool things that came up in your problems that you introduced. It's beautiful, Joe. Um, your input then for Cassie. I think that the, the big thing that I saw that was interesting is that there was a level of interaction that was like the go minus my character. I did that. Mm -hmm. There was a reason. Um, but the fact that you kept the story engaging. Mm -hmm. That was intriguing. Uh, I think at one point the only flaw that I saw was any time that the dynamic shifts away from basically the main GM role and then basically the, the discussion that obviously is not gone. It's not gone. Yeah. Yeah. You have to engage. You have to move forward. Because uh, the longer that battle goes on, the more it gets drawn out, the more it becomes convoluted, it becomes an impasse, and it's not the story. Yeah, we're certainly inspiring some good input from uh, Pro here, so uh, that's way cool. Go ahead and read it aloud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, personally, back down on Twitter, I mean, uh, it's, it's ultimately very destructive to the game and the group. Well, me, even me, and my friends were like, yeah. So I was like, okay, you can either sign up for the or it bounces off, or it doesn't do it. Because I was obviously playing, too, I wasn't really meaning the silent thing. Okay. Everybody familiar with the abbreviation PVP? Uh, okay. yeah. You could have said, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I, I felt you did a really good job in setting up the, the scenario of where we were with, as you said, the, the winter portion. And I we all learn as the seminar goes along mm -hmm. here, you know, she yeah, was applying it in some way. Well, but it did. And I liked how you actually brought in the, are we hearing wolves in the distance? Might they be coming closer? So you're, we're not moving towards the orcs anymore, but you're adding in some extra threat or some extra thing to potentially help keep something moving forward. And I liked, I liked how you did that. Um, and the, the biggest thing that I saw was definitely in the, uh, with, with him being silenced and him not doing anything. I mean, he can still talk about what he's doing. So he might not, his character might not be able to make noise, but I'm sure he's doing something other than just kind of sitting there staring at us while we're doing stuff. So maybe bringing that up. Um, and then the other piece was, we know he's scouting nearby. We don't necessarily know what is he focusing on in the course of the two hours that he's circling us. Is he just kind of laughing at us and watching us and trying to... So that was that was something I was really curious on as a player because it was, it was back to the whole, I'm 
just kind of being loud, running around camp, doing stuff that's probably not the best thing for what's going on, which you were bringing the wolves in, coming in closer to emphasize that, which was good. Yeah, it was really good use of, of that we're not coming toward the problem, so the problem is coming toward us. Mm -hmm. And that definitely raised attention. And as, as I was playing that, I was interested and I wanted to encounter these wolves. Mm -hmm. I was just frustrated at nobody else doing that. So I was trying to get him to engage the wolves. I think you were about to be picked you, on. You were trying to get me as I'm like, I'm going out to go to the bathroom. Bring back some wolves. I'm not going to pee on some wolves. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, I want to do something. And I was, I was using rules learning as a tool. Um, and I think what he was saying of using me to engage the players, because I was interested in, in what you were doing, I was just being side disruptive because I was frustrated at them not going on the adventure. So. Okay. Your comments on your own deal. Um, clearly, I should have addressed the, the silence thing. I, it, yep, I agree there. But, um, I like storytelling. It's something that I like to think that I, I kind of have a natural affinity for. So the, the wolves thing, I my party tends to deal with spontaneous encounters as the best see fit. But I like the idea that when you're traveling in the wilderness, you know, it's a dangerous place. It's a dangerous world out there. So. In the earliest days, we looked at the outdoor encounter charts, and then when we realized we could run into 400 bugbears, we refused to leave town. Uh, later, the rules got clarified, but I mean, according to the original rules, two miles out of town, you could suddenly run into it, but then we figured out layers versus wandering and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, so a lot of the early dungeons were like within three miles of a town. Because, all right, we don't get into the outdoor encounter charts. No, or we're not leaving, period. There's one other thing back to the rules lawyering bit. Um, you let him get you to the point of being frustrated and just kind of staring at you. And that is actually something where um, I'm not necessarily sure how best to address that, but that's definitely something that you want to try and avoid because at the point in time where you get that frustrated, it also will create a air of unease and frustration in the group as well as they're watching the, the GM kind of... That one. Yeah. Be I'm not sure how I with the player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you handed her a really complex, multi layered problem. Yeah. And uh, once again, nice job. Yeah. Yeah. For, I'm not sure a little intense one. for, for <laughs> Cassie. I think Sean might have a comment that might help. No, you just oh, kind of thought you were saying. Okay. But if, if you've got a suggestion on how we might handle a situation sure. like that, because I'm sure you've seen it before. Yeah. Sure. Uh, very excellent, very perspicacious point on loss of control <coughs> by implication means loss of control of the game, of the experience of the ongoing campaign, wishy-washy DM, all we can push her around, etc. You have unfortunately have the additional gender overlay to deal with, that some people are automatically going to something in their subconscious, etc., treat you in a certain way based on their own preconceptions. And all she's not going to do is go to job, or it's going to be more lovey dovey and less combat, you know, the different kinds of screwball things we get in our heads. Um, and so I think in your particular case, unfortunately, in modern society, you need to establish yourself as a control almost control freak for a while to when that starts going I gave you one option to think it through find out what works best for you with the rules lawyer so one problem to solve but you need to shut that down pretty fast and establish yourself as the position this it's not that I'm claiming a position of dominance you want me to game master here right okay that's the unspoken thing you don't want to go through all the hassle you want me to handle that for the group yes Okay, then why are you giving me such a, you know, I need you to work with me on this, folks. Either, oh, we got a boss, fine, let's, let's, now let's screw up the boss. No, this isn't work. Okay, where you're fighting against people. No, it's cooperative. And so these unspoken compacts need to be sometimes made a little more spoken to just get everybody on the same page. And then you don't have to go back and bash them, you know. And if somebody slips on it, yeah, you can bring it up with more generally. Um, but yeah, it, the implications of that loss of control go far further. The other thing is PvP, and that is a group decision, I feel. Now this kicks into one thing that I absolutely insist on when I run games, people who have applied this have fabulous results. Before you start an ongoing campaign, you need to make sure everybody's on the same page. 
Um, and that's where you bring up these unspoken compacts, the base ground rules, et cetera, et cetera. If you need to, if you want to, write them all up. Things as simple as respect everybody's else. Uh, keep external real world stuff out. You know, I'm big on safe ground of the gaming table and with respect to simply respecting other people's beliefs. I know some people who sincerely hate Disney fantasy movies as corrupting the mind. It's an extreme point of view, but dwelling on the fantastic, the unreal, can be to the detriment of a growing, shaping mind. Okay, you let kids get too far into unreality, and they're not grounded enough to put the basics in to have success in life. Okay, some people feel so strongly about that with honest, sincerely held beliefs that. We respect those beliefs, we don't invite them, push them into playing these games, etc. Most folks who don't know about the games are open to the possibility of a contract. So you look at sincere beliefs, okay, you, this gets so hairball and so complex, but you just respect each other's beliefs and avoid potential conflicts at the gaming table under that unspoken compact of cooperation, mutual respect, things like this on this lofty plane. So you have a setup session for a campaign. We all tweak rules, okay, house rules, this and that. Whenever you set up house rules, establish when you do so a time frame for review. is a standard corporate procedure for policies and things for good companies. You run with a proposed variant rule of whatever type, however minor, for a while, then you review the effects. Okay, that rule we have for combats on blah, 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 this, so how has this worked in the last three months, in the last 12 games we had? Do you like it? Do you want to keep it? Do you want to tweak it again? In the same way, you revisit some of the basic precepts and, this is a long way around the barn, you're used to my way of speaking, the PVP thing, the player versus player. If that is outspoken right in front of everybody that yes, your closest comrade might surprise have an unspoken agenda and turn on you at some point, it will add an element of tension. But it is not absolutely, definitely, categorically, absolutely wrong. If the group wants it. But if you try that and you revisit like in three months or 12, 10 game sessions, whatever, there. And it, people are getting too paranoid. Okay, one, my first Gen Con ever, I played, got involved in a game of Sniper amongst the TSR employees. By the end of the con, I was just ringing wet. I hadn't gotten hardly any sleep. It was just stress city. And I never played Sniper at a con again. For those of you who don't know, you get a photo and a little uh, gun with ping pong ball. And you try and ambush them and shoot them, and then you get their photo, who they were looking for, and it shakes itself down to just two people. Okay. Tension City on top of the whole con experience, and you're looking you're careful going through doors. Do you want that in your campaign where everybody's looking at each other without that level of mutual trust? If it's good role play, it can work fabulous. Okay. But get group you might go so far as to insist on unanimous consensus on something this controversial. But something like this needs to be addressed. Well you you don't let this Bull in the china shop wander loose without being defined. Put salt on its tail, as they say with the, the crow. Um, find out whether you're going to allow PvP or not, absolutely not allow PvP, as a ground rule for an entire campaign experience, game session, whatever. At convention games, you don't have time to screw around with this, so you say no PvP unless it's built into a scenario, in which case you weren't. That's my comments on the whole player versus player thing. It's with that, most of what I've seen is if you. You don't have to bring it up automatically, whatever. But if something looks like it's going that direction or someone's starting to do that, you can say, okay, for right now, let's not do PvP because, or bring it up to the table and say, do we want to have PvP? I'm okay with it if it is. But until the situation arises, unless you're actually with like your home group or doing a full campaign, if you're in a con situation, most people aren't going to assume PvP. So it's not something, unless you actually want it, that you necessarily have to bring up. Wrong comments. I believe it creates too much personal desires and real pain for friends. <laughs> Wrong comment. Or David, give him the card back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Give him a gold star. Distress. Distress. Uh, oh, okay. I'm bad at reading. Okay. So I'll recap on the comment <laughs> with the right word. Comment it one more time. Too much uh, pain and distress between real friends. Okay. Yeah, but granted, 
but that's your point of view. And in a given gaming group, if they opt for that, and find a way through that, and enjoy the additional spice that offers. Different people will I mean, different yeah, different, different strokes, different folks. I, I've done some good Our PvP. preference is absolutely no PvP, but I'm saying in the right context, with the right ground rules, with it all out on the table, it can work in a scenario, or in a, even in a gaming group. And that's one thing where, if it hasn't come up, like you're halfway through a session, it starts to come up, that's when you bring it up and say, do we want to have this at all? Or if you know for a fact you don't want to have it at all, if anyone doesn't want to have it at all, that's something to bring up. And I think this ties in personally to the comment you made just in passing about my table, my rules. Mm -hmm. The underlying precept upon which that statement is based is you have asked me to game master. You have accepted whatever style I offer. I will tweak that style to some extent to customize for the group. But you have said, not I have said, you have said, it's your table, game master. And we will all, we need a leader, we need a, you know, an authority figure here to keep things going, to set the ground rules. But again, I am a populist, I believe in polling everybody for their opinions. I believe there is no right or wrong in this approach, except obviously things like pulling a knife and axing the guy sitting next to you as opposed to in the game. Uh, yeah, somebody did pull a knife once in one of my games real early, and I had to settle that real-world situation. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty rough one. Yeah, that's extreme. But the, the overall point is communication. This You are running a game as a joint decision of the gaming group, or because you said, I'm going to run a game at a con or something, which is a different thing. But if you are serving the group in that capacity, it is your job as leader so appointed to poll your voters and find out what sort of game they want, what they like. And in that case, that's why I'm saying you agree in advance on regular intervals or have a space at the end of each game session or before each game session to comment on procedures, the environment, things like this. Keep the come flow going. Find ways to reward input even if you disagree with it. Like I handled his comment and said yes, but you know the validity. But you look for good and bad and everything. And said, you know that way you're not coming down on somebody for offering a very point. You know there are a lot of psychological elements then in that discussion. You had an input. Yeah, actually, I was in a gaming group where something like that came up, and the the DM just basically said let's put a pin in that and put it aside for a mm -hmm. couple minutes and then when it was time for our 10 minute break when everyone wanted to get their smoke break or whatever that's when we discussed it with the players and said do you really want to do this and just basically as it was outside the context of the the role playing yeah he, he brought it up and said do you want to do that again obviously outside the context you can pin it come back later but there's sometimes rulings you got to make right in the middle of stuff and there for you example like when he was going to silence him that's something that does have to be determined right away as it's an action that's happening right now mm -hmm. So there is there is some some es essence of being able to set aside if you can is, is a good thing, but there there are definitely times where that's not an option, unfortunately. Enjoying the workshop? Yeah, definitely. It's it's a whole different level than you hear most people talk about the gaming experience. Um, anything more from you or anybody on this one? Still doing well? Anybody need a break? Okay, we're good. Do you want to take a shot at it, or would you rather not? Let's do it. Okay. All right. Yes. We'll get the little bombs here. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Here we try. Nice. Cool. He's trying it. to keep it from being in his game. Quiet is just not Okay. So we've done two fantasy and a super. Yeah. Should I keep going in one of those lines or something? Else? No, I'm gonna actually throw a wrench at the Great. Um, cyber futuristic. Okay. <laughs> cyber. And your name once again for anybody who forgot? It's Eric. Right. With a K or C? Either of them. I'll take either or C. What about C? Q. E R I Q. I haven't met Q. There's the A R I K. Okay. All right. I got to think of a cyber deal. All right. Can do.
Okay, Cyberpunk. Now you've got plenty of experience watching, so I, glad we saved you for last. You got to handle the whole situation. Um, the Dark City at night. Um, we are on some sort of mission. I need to break in somewhere, etc. But the moment we're out in alleys, the Underdark, uh, that sort of thing, city-wise, uh, futuristic, uh, dark and stormy night, classic. Okay. That's what we're up to is highly covert, probably. Uh, but we have gone to need our physical power as well. So you need more? That's enough. Okay. Feel free to take a bit to think about it. Everybody good with the starter? Okay. Uh, any particular game system? Well, not game system, but I'm thinking more you know, based around. You guys know what do sex is? Okay. So think that. Okay. Keep that on. Do sex. Okay. All right. All right. Let's begin. I am GM Darkania. This is my game. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gauge everyone on this one. So we're going to go ahead and we're pick what type of character and class we want. Uh, combat medic. I want to go with a cyber thief, like cybernetic, the enhanced thief. Okay. So I have security guard type. Yeah, I was thinking stealthy, stealth type rather than ninja. Hacker. Ninja. -y. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's the scenario here. All right. So here's how we get a base build. <laughs> so, right now, we're looking down an alley. We're seeing a situation where we have our team ready, we're ready to roll. We realize there's a small problem, unfortunately. The problem is, is that we have everything we need, we have all the intelligence, we know our initiative, but unfortunately, the power is Unfortunately, the only thing that has power is the place we need to get into. <laughs> oh, you do it, wouldn't you? Scenario, you how we get in, exactly. pass the security, pass the cyberbots, pass everything they have inside. I think he oh, can, if he's a security, security guard, we need to get past security. Yeah, security. I think you can stealth into there and mimic one of the security guys. Do you want cheese? Uh, you can be a distraction <laughs> one, too, I think, from the room and sneak to the back. Uh, well, I mean, he's already going in on the ground level. Why don't I just climb to the side of the wall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, like, he comes in through the front door, you come up, maybe you come up to the side for both the and duty, and then you just create a big explosion or something down the street. Are we going in somewhere close, or do we have to travel? Okay, less than a mile. Less than a mile? Oh, it's a ways, I guess. It's not, it's not too bad, but I think it's like, what, 20? So you're doing anything? Your dad's got a pink car, huh? Where are we needing? What are we needing to get out of, out of this You're building? Going. Just a dog. Okay. There is a paper chicken. Signal me. Alright, so what happened? Alright, so at this point, I think we're ready to move forward. We have our goals, we have our missions. Do you need to roll anything for the stealth check? Yeah, let's go ahead and roll it. Okay, fine. I take point. No, I'm not very stealthy at all. Get a bonus or something. Doesn't matter. No bonus, okay. sorry. Not gonna happen. Natural misery. Sorry. Uh, 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 ain't gonna work. She got hers on there. So unfortunately, right. since the role was not what we needed, we come across an encounter with something. Okay. And unfortunately, he has full shield. He has full knowledge of our group and our situation. Okay. Now I have, being the specialist in combat, the use of force techniques. You two are the two combat guys. You should run out. Well, I'm in the front of the building to get everybody to distract. We haven't got there yet, though. We haven't got there yet? No, because he, he botched his rolling. Oh, okay. Right. On the dynamic one, she's the passive one that is a med. Yeah, you're, you're a board mm -hmm. type. So whatever I got to do, I, I do the right stuff and I move in on it then. If we've been fat. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm, we've been fat. I'm going to roll my EMP uh, to try and knock down the shield. Oh, okay. Oh. Right. Now it starts so raining. Yeah. Am I had like personal a wall at this point in time looking down on the situation? Yeah. 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 You're thinking that scenario. Is, is this clear? Where are we? So that is, I mean, he's able to stealth to get into the building. Are we at the building? Or? We're just outside. Okay. He's got to have the button. I just need the button. He is making another thing with his eye. It's just not mine. You should probably shoot it. 
if that's why I do it. I don't know enough about the bot to know which tactic to use. I'm assuming the character is oh, professional oh, enough to um, figure that out and take them hey, trusting the game master. Well, but you have to. Uh, I, mean, I want to do an intelligence or like a some sort of cyber guy to check out what the boss thing you want. Remember all the risk. That one is pretty good. If you want more than that, I pretty much. Appreciate it. Well, you're able to hack it. Unfortunately, it costs an intrusion. Mm -hmm. He is now aware of your situation because he's not only. I'm going to do, yeah, and I'm going to do a hot dog, drink and shoot. So at this point, I think I'm outside. Have we communicated over the comms at all what's going on, or am I going in blind right now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I told you what was going on. Okay, so I think at this point, well, I'm at the front of the building getting ready to create a distraction to distract from what's happening. Remember, that was my plan. So I have a briefcase, it's got the C4 in it, it's got the timer. So I'm just going to casually walk into the building and set it down and walk back out and wait. Yeah. You wait, the scenario brings a work around. Kill the boss, now the building is You set off the security system. Hack it. Uh, Turn that thing off. <laughs> I'm still just thinking fighting on the side of the wall. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man's fun. Alright, make another hack to try and turn the security to the wall. I wasn't sure if I didn't do our success. Well, after it blows on first in, tell me how it happens. At this point, I think he's ahead of you, actually. So at this point, elevators are down. Stairs are the only thing that's up. We have no 40 feet. But how high up? But I'm yeah. How high up the wall am I on this building? Have I made it to the roof? You're on the ninth floor. Ninth floor. Even with the cybernetic legs, I need to get the bonus. It gives him the bonus, but this is not a traditional building. Yeah, oh, it has the reinforced steel walls and all that. Is there okay. anything that's able? Oh, wow. Is there like, am I seeing like arsenal uh, on the side, or is it like le ledges I'm having to go up? Or? Yeah. Okay, I think. Uh, so that we can get around the stairs, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna attach a cable on the edge of one of this ledge and just drop it down, and we'll, we'll pull people up as we need to. I think you just punch through the window. I think the doors, the stairs will be faster. That's true. We can't punch through the wall. Yeah. Well. Okay, gotta move through this too. All right. So punch through the wall, climbing over, getting through doors. There's a reason I'm doing that. I'm doing shit. Does he start on? Oh, I've got a. a there, you get smacked with a rope that gets you in the head as it comes down. Over here, comes. Tie that around you. We're going to get you up here. Alright, I tie it around. Yeah, I'm just going to literally pull it off. At this point, we're on a safe point in the building. We still need to get the doctor. Mission critical. It's classified data. Help us win this. Uh, didn't he, what's he doing? Did he get pulled up or did he go inside? I just can't help him. Still up one man down. Will Smith's right upstairs. You should probably drop the rope. Yeah, well, I'll drop, well, I'll drop the rope when I see him out there. I'm not going to drop the rope in case I'm pulling someone up who's not in. So, overcome. Okay, we're dropping the rope. Where are you? I'm not sure. Tom check. Make, make an explosion. Where am I? Still at the bottom of the building. Oh, first floor in there. We so haven't started up the stairs or anything yet. Well, you were left behind because your team left Well, we were sneaking around on the outside of the building. I got him up the wall, and I assume you came in. You were. I took point, but nobody followed me. I tried to follow As I him. understood it, uh, <laughs> I'll get me for sure. I, I thought we we had a couple of guys that were going up on the outside. You were you were going to be going in on the inside. I just run, down, I just run back down and figure. Grab him and take back up. So at this point, now we're back as a team. We're so near to our document. I only have one thing we can spice a boss fight. Oh, yeah. oh. She's a boss fight. Shooting it. I'm, I'm still, I'm in the air I'm about it. I think we got enough to work with. Duh, the quiet guy. Um, yeah, the, the, from a personal point of view, you did almost nothing to draw me into the action, etc. You let me withdraw and just, now I don't know. Literally his right, right. He was driving my car. And not I, I was, oh, um, uh, uh, let's see. There were certain, I'm going to hit the bad parts and the good parts. Um, 
there seem to be time anomalies. But it is perfectly valid, as we know, that you're into second by second analysis during combat, and then you shift to narrative mode or whatever, and periods of time go by when action this is a good technique. You know, this key, uh, balances the, the, the no. obvious. Well, I don't need to label that. But I didn't have a good sense. Like yeah. when you said, okay, and so he comes get you, you go up the stairs, and then you reunite. Some sort of tag on that as to what sort of time interval may have occurred. And perhaps a comparative. And meanwhile, if you had something else going on in proximity, while you're doing that over 15 minutes, as you go up to there, then this also happens, and you convey a sense of life goes on. Things are still happening, whether you're going to screw around or not. Uh, similar to what an earlier scenario brought up, you put on an implicit uh, time constraint by just simply mentioning that the wolves got louder. One comment, and all of a sudden we're on a dead end. And you leave it that open-ended without a sense of time, and it can lapse into, well, let's just go around for a while. There's no reason to be going. You were OK at giving us the goal defined and the process, but a little more time sense would have been appropriate. Now, this gets into the way you think of something versus the way the face-to-face -face is. In your programming, you may, that may be totally irrelevant, or it may just simply trigger a metric that gets advanced a number of units or whatever. But for personal interaction with the scene, it helps to provide some sense of time in conjunction with obvious running around doing this and that, like, okay, we took care of the stream bot. I thought that was a real good way to handle it since you decide this is not a major encounter. So bang, bang, you do what you do, you take it down, get inside. Yeah, real good. But give us an idea of what happened while that went on, what kind of time was consumed. Even if the time frame is a red herring. By applying a time frame, we automatically assume, okay, we're on some kind of a deadline, even if we're not really. And then, in a way, we are on a deadline because we want to accomplish things and have fun within the context of you know, getting to that level. You know, let's do something while we're playing today. You know, come on, I want to roll. It's been an hour and a half. I haven't rolled dice yet. You know, that sort of thing. Too much story. So, um, other input on, on that, the time thing, or uh, as I said, on the uh, handling me, the quiet guy, especially tips on extracting the quiet guy. I was definitely trying to abuse the fact that your time was fast and loose. Um, by, by doing everything all at once. And that's something you'll see a lot of players do. They they want to be involved in everything. So I was with him, I was with him, I was with him. He kind of like, okay, where are you? Yeah, tying into a sense of location. Every now and then, he's slapping down. No, you're over there. You as a player can talk, but the character cannot. You're still over there. Yeah. Once again, opportunity to emphasize that dichotomy of player versus character. See, a lot of the things we're discussing are really psychological techniques. It's not the mechanics that you deal with all the time. So Sean's comments kind of in order on this one. So the first is not we, they. Going with we implies you're the lead PC instead of the GM. Um, some declarations are a bit too declarative and arbitrary. Uh, you need to be a little more of an advocate for the players, uh, a bit of a fan as well as the one challenging them. Uh, working with the players to establish clarity, so that kind of gets into the whole where we didn't really know what was going on or where we were, or who, who was doing what, that kind of thing. Um, not so much gotcha, they don't need to feel they're competing with you. Um, and then his last comment was, some more action cinema style descriptions of actions will make it Come alive a bit yeah, for a cyberpunk type thing, if you go a little more cinematic, I think I could really love the scenario. Did like the random rain burst? That was a nice mm -hmm. that really sure. was like, oh yeah, it's probably rained even more, and that was a good little thing. So more of that was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, uh, kind of as I was mentioning, the letting the party get so wrapped up in other things that they completely lose what's going on around them or, or what was what was happening among them where we didn't have any clue where he was or what he was doing. And I had the quiet player, so yeah. I'm just, I, many times I was going to volunteer something, nope, I'm nope. the quiet guy. Well, and on top of that, I go through a wall, anybody got some C4? I mean, fine, done, yeah. next. We knew that the security systems were inactive, but that never actually came up and never really challenged us in any way, so 
supposedly the security system is on the building that is the only building with power were enacted, but we got in through the side of the building. We were able to go down the stairs, get the guy, bring him back up. We never actually saw the security in any way, shape, or form. Here's where invoking the rule thing might have helped. Uh, you realize, uh, whoever, who was the cyber specialist? Do you? You might comment then, you realize with the alarms going off, it just jumped from level three to level one security. Okay. With the implied mechanics, you know, and all that, but just, ooh, serious. I do really like the, I don't remember, the, the oh, that's implied in front of windows here. Um, and that's kind of, I was trying to do a thing, and it got redirected in a useful way. Mm -hmm. That was good. Any ideas on drawing me out? I was implied. Um, Why ones are well, tough? Yeah. Like what, what I did. Like dominant folks, at least they're engaged. At least you can communicate. Probably at least you can put. If you, well, especially in a situation where you've got the dominant trying to play the character or the quiet one, instead of letting that happen, telling him that's not your character, what is your character doing? Or what is your character thinking? Or what would you like to be doing? That's a, that's a good idea. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. An input. I think making a, a challenge specific to their character. So if you if you notice that someone is being quiet, take their character, whatever their character is good at, and create something that their character would only uh, only their character would be able to do, so that you can kind of focus the attention on them and just see if they're they're willing to engage on that. Don't make it a serious <laughs> threat, but just enough to, to engage them to kind of bring that. That, that, that could turn on you, there. though, in a flash. Yeah, um, I picked a sort of a generic heavy, but the openings were there for other skills, et cetera. And you brought up one, et cetera. You could have given me a physical challenge of some sort other than combat. You could have given me a security challenge within my purview. Okay, within the narrow field of, of security and that element. But it takes a little creativity. Once again, maybe it works best for you to have a few notes for what ifs. Maybe if it's a regular ongoing scenario that you're coming back to continue the setting and et cetera, the characters, you've already thought about the characters and thought about different player aspects that you need to remember to address, as well as, I mean, I have kept the cue cards on people as well as characters to help my social management techniques. Remember that her brother died a month ago and she's still depressed about that, so don't bring up brother references. You know, just little, I can't keep track of all these personal things and all these over overtones, but sometimes remembering that can really help. Depends on how detailed you want to get really on that. All right, one of my biggest problems is one that I don't know if you're gonna be able to work on and fix or, okay, just straight up. You were doing most of the game with your hands full. Okay, there's a natural posture. The implication is uh, essentially the Gandalf position, you know, the wise elder, you know, I am not going to be dynamic and engaging, etc. I have all the answers, etc. Mr. Sir. Okay. This is less engaging and can be the physical posture, can be interpreted as go away. Now I gotta tell you. If you can mentally force yourself to just let your hands go, put them to your side, etc., now and then for a bit, that breaks that in life. The worst is, I saw one game master stood up and said, "Okay, what are we going to do?" And his hands are, his arms are saying, "I am the boss. You shall not question me, and don't bother." Me. Okay, and I worked with him on various physical techniques. And by the end of the session, he asked, asked if he could do another one. Boy, was he engaging and welcoming. It's uh, just being aware of some of this stuff. Um, and to be blunt, it means you got to deal with feeling unnatural. No, I'm uncomfortable. I'm not physically the way I want to be. But for the sake of this uber goal, and when you can prioritize that, yes, you can control your impulses. But it becomes a thing you've got to be concerned about instead of letting it go natural. You know, and here I'm talking about the way our heads work and, and handling things like that. Been there, done that. Well, I've got similar thing when I'm doing that. Yeah, those are the games. Yeah. But in that case, it was a little more hostile. They're actually as opposed one to piece of cloth that goes straight, straight down. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's not as opposed to merely what you distracting. Do is you lay them out there, I think it's easy for you to just pry your hands loose you in your natural one movement. Of two strings, and you pull Whereas you have a different in the front, you don't have you a natural physicality going. You pull it, you, you tie it from the back. Position, when they droop, they droop, 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 droop down, yeah. like Digest long, wavy, just pants, and then you can tie them up. Like I said, no, a lot about the way your head works. I see a lot of me.
standing up can help engage. Uh, the physical posture here, if you can get yourself halfway comfortable with it at all, it can be tough. Uh, I'm a total introvert. Huh? I, mean, I won't even answer the phone. You know, I live on the internet and no, I'm like all buttoned up. But due to my past, I have this other persona. I can't pass the Minnesota Bar personalities test anymore and things like that. Well, I'm very gregarious. I'll go, but this isn't me. Okay. And you hear me on this, I can tell. Um, so that's why I chose to address this. It's a tough nut to crack. It means you got to adopt a certain persona and worry about that as well as the game details, the pacing, and all this. Figure out a way to put it on automatic. Remind yourself to check posture and you're listening. Maybe in your notes. Maybe a habit routine that you develop. I do a lot with routines. No, that's wrong. This has to be done after that because that's how I get it all done and make sure it's all done right before I go to the next task. That's my personal time management, things like that. A lot of options. It depends on what you feel best. Any any response on that? Do you feel any of my stuff is valid? No, I, it, it is valid. I, I guess that from my standpoint, because usually when I'm in the convention, circuit doing stuff is that most of the time I'm the one giving the presentation. So I'm used to movement, engaging. Uh, I mean, this is a little bit different because when you're doing like a, a panel on game design, when you're actually saying, okay, so let's start with a concept, let's build characters, let's create the characters, you're, inter you're, you're interacting with each individual person on what their role is. Because I mean, an artist would be great for doing the create, right? Uh, the person who's doing the dynamics of the game is going to focus on the mathematics. So it's like you have to switch between creative, logic, creative, logic. I'm used to doing that. In this role, it's a little different because, I mean, I'm not used to this dynamic. Because this dynamic's more free flow. Uh, it's creativity with a little sense of logic. But you, my thing is that I'm trying to disengage that mathematical piece. Mm -hmm. Because I, th I think it's more of an engagement. Than I think engaging that mathematical piece could help you. Um, and because timing issues was because you were disengaged. If you start to think of everything and, okay, tick, 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 what's going on, there is a lot of underlying logic. We just make it look like there's not. One one thing that I know, so Sean made the comment on game mastering is performance art. Um, that kind of gets into a little bit of where you were saying it's, it's ticking into some of that other stuff. But one thing that I know, especially Sean does a lot with, is, uh, and we're not getting this here because this is kind of a theater of the mind setup, but in general, with a lot of his games and a lot of other games that I see, we have a map on the table with a grid, and we've got miniatures, and so that helps keep everyone knowing, well, this is the situation that we can see, because we can see this building layout, this is kind of where my character is, and then you can go through and have people saying, okay, so I'm going to do this here, and it helps kind of draw in a little bit more of uh, some of that aspect that's similar to what you get from the video game design, where you, everyone can see exactly what the map looks like. Everyone can see where people are. And then that also can help track, okay, I've just seen these three people do something. This person hasn't moved. Okay, so what are you, and that can help potentially bring in a little bit more of what you're used to to help drive and get, get it a little more comfortable for you and also keep things moving. And that actually would potentially help solve some of the other things that we were commenting on too. Other input? Thinking of it as a presentation a little bit, it's a performance art. Um, getting up is okay. Yeah, sometimes I'll just walk around the table. I can actually get mad at interact physically with players, facts, and all that. Sometimes just feel a little busy or no reason to have to stay sit, sit down and hide hiding. It helps you to get out and get back. But nevertheless, the Game Master is a member of the gaming group. That's one thing people keep forgetting, has an equal vote in how things should happen. Now, you, you, I, I am personally against the my table, my rules, absolute thing. I'm more in communication and I am here representing what you want and trying to correct you with what you want. So yes, there's a performance art side. But my sister is an internationally known classical opera singer. She's been on stage at the Met routinely. She plays Carnegie like most of us would go down to the deli. But that's performance art. But this additional element of social management and personal interaction, et cetera, is not applied to performance. So it's, you get double duty here. Not only do you have to perform, entertain, do all that stuff, hence this seminar, you know, looking at the social interaction, all these natural couple of things we didn't hit on. When somebody does something wrong, says something wrong, looking for a rule, object, or other non-person to blame it on. 
or event in their lives or whatever. When you attack somebody personally, even by implication, by criticizing them, there's a certain hurt. It's just the way people are. When you can deliberately pretend to attack something else and they know really, yeah, I, I screwed up, but okay, for now it'll help me swallow that pill to blame it on a rule knowledge thing or blame it on you know something else. Mm -hmm. This gets into real esoteric elements of the social management personal interactions. Yeah, I actually did take like speech classes and ended up with a uh, minor in theater just because I was Volunteer group management, he points out. Um, so, in wrapping, we've gone a little bit over our time frame by 